Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. As part of the Midwestern Indigenous Society here in Lloydminster, there is a program helping out the less fortunate in our community. The Tawa program is a group that focuses on harm reduction as well as rehabilitation and support for the homeless community. You know, because our parent group, AMSIS, is very big on kinship, uh, that's why we represent uh, First Nation, non-status, Métis, Inuit. Because a family is Indigenous doesn't mean they're all the same. And the, the whole distinction-based um, societies and whatnot, that was a move from the colonial government. Uh, so we keep families together under the same membership. The group has worked closely with the city to gain support financially as well as publicly. They use these connections to better the care they can give through their outreach program. Between myself and council members as well as the support from administration and we're going to continue to work on that relationship. And one of the striving pieces of the, of the Truth and Reconciliation calls to action was economic opportunities. So we'll continue to enhance and grow those as First Nations, Métis people and non-status decide to enter business. Where do we have the opportunities to try and connect and help them? The Tawa program currently has 150 members and is looking to grow their community more in the name of helping the less fortunate around the city. To volunteer for the program or find more information, you can visit MidwestIndigenous.ca. Multiple land use bylaws were proposed earlier this week at City Council. The first bylaw proposed was for the location at 3015 41st Ave with the goal of providing low to medium density residential housing in the form of townhouses and row houses. The city, as through the land division, is the developer. And yet it's still part of the city, but the land developer as uh, land division has to meet the same requirements as any private developer would have to. So there's a series of steps. And as you saw, we treat all applications that's uh, it was dark and doubt on the application form. And it was explained that it was the city that's actually bringing this process, uh, process forward through land division as a standalone group. With these bylaws upcoming, they brought concerns that were quickly answered about the state of Lloyd Place. Certainly there was a, a series of, of discussions around some land use bylaws that will affect the potential for the future Lloyd Minster Place. To try and follow the steps, that's what's so unique about this planning process and a lot of discussion in the community about planning, that uh, there is a series of steps that have to be followed. And that's why she brought it forward as she did. And I think the, the questions at the end of the day were answered that may very clear sense. All land use bylaws brought up this week will be addressed during the next council meeting on April 24th. We may not be experiencing July weather just yet, but we definitely will be seeing the sun this weekend. For more on your weekend weather forecast, here is our Shelby Clark. Thank you so much, Miss Abby St. John. Yes, I got some good news for you. We aren't going to be quite matching those summer temperatures just yet, but we're almost there. We're almost there. I know she's smiling behind the camera right now. We're close. Right now for our Friday here in the border city, we're just sitting at nine degrees. So even getting closer to those double digits, uh, looking slightly warmer than what we were seeing uh, yesterday. We are looking at a lot more sun peeking behind those clouds. So a much sunnier day today as well. And that kind of helped warm things up. So hopefully everybody's enjoying this beautiful Friday as we start off our weekend here because we're already starting off on a good note. Switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most spots are seeing some of those double digits. Uh, most are kind of matching with us here in the border city just at nine degrees and then we have some that are slightly cooler, especially for Wainwright and up in Lac La Biche, just at six and seven and the rest are seeing around 11 and 12. So definitely have uh, warmed it up for today for our Friday. Switching over to our Saskatchewan side now, they are matching with us with those conditions uh, just like they have been for the past 
last couple of days this week. Uh, Isle of Cross seems to be the coolest with that six degree mark. And then we got some of those tens here for Pearsland, Green Lake and Meadow Lake. And then the rest are just sitting around nine degrees, matching with us, of course, here in the border city. And then down in North Balfour, kind of matching with Isle of Cross around that seven degree mark. They will be going down to low of minus four. So hitting that minus mark once again for our evening low temperatures, although a very nice, uh, clear and calm night expected for North Balfour tonight. So should be a beautiful night, I would say. And then for their Saturday, kicking it up a notch, 15 degrees for their daytime high. So hitting definitely those double digits, even almost getting closer to that 20 degree mark and seeing a much sunnier day for North Balfour tomorrow. So if you're there, you know, make sure to get out there and enjoy it for your weekend. Cold Lake will be going out to low minus three for their evening low tonight. They also won't be seeing a high chance of flurries or rainfall. They will be expecting a clear and calm night. So quite beautiful. And then for their Saturday daytime high of 14 degrees. So hitting those double digits as well. They will be seeing some mostly uh, sunny conditions conditions, although expecting a shower in spots in the afternoon. So just be prepared for some light uh, rainfall throughout the day on Saturday in Cold Lake. For us here in the Border City, we will be going now to low of minus four. So hitting kind of the same temperature as what we saw last night. We won't be expecting any too high chances of flurries or rainfall as well tonight. So we will be expecting a calm night. And then for our Saturday, we're hitting that double digit finally, getting that 10 degrees and plenty of sun. So yes, we almost have that beach weather coming up soon this weekend. We're getting a little taste of it so hopefully we will be seeing it warm up into next week and now ending off the look at your three-day forecast we will be looking at that 10 degrees tomorrow for our Saturday with a lot more sun even warming up on Sunday as we end off the weekend at 13 degrees so please make sure to get outside and enjoy these beautiful conditions for the weekend and as we head into next week starting on Monday we'll be seeing that uh, those warm conditions continue on starting off the week with 14 degrees so be prepared we should be seeing another beautiful week here in the border city and that's all I have for now for a first look at your weather forecast. Thanks so much, Shelby. When we come back, fashion forward thinkers in Edmonton are taking used clothing bound for the landfill and are transforming it into something new. Welcome back. The second Everything Equine on the Border is taking place this weekend at the Lloydminster Exhibition. With more, here's our Thomas Wildman. Everything Equine is a three-day event that focuses on horse training and riding for people of all ages, and day one has been a great success. We've got, uh, you know, stands are third to half full for, uh, for a Friday morning first go, so we're pretty happy with that. First session of clinic was done, nothing but good uh, reviews from that. And the second one just wrapping up as well. People in the stands enjoying it. Lots of people wandering around, checking everything out. So very happy with everything so far. While clinics run in the Saskatchewan building, in the Culligan Water building is the Trainer's Challenge, where three horse trainers work to calm and train a fresh ranch horse in just three short days. Uh, the goal is to be able to take the horse through uh, the finals as a, as a pattern out in the large arena where there's obstacle courses, and they're judging it on... Um, uh, the willingness of the horse and, and how it goes. So I guess my goal is just to uh, see how far I can take him and get him to that point and just see where he's at and help him grow. The trainer's challenge has a few extra hurdles to clear for both trainer and horse than when working at home as the trainer's challenge has a live audience. The struggle with having a horse in front of a crowd such as this event is uh, the horse has a lot of stimulation and we have stress also, and I guess the, the struggle would be to not portray our stress and then, or deal through it and help the horse deal through his own too because coming all right off the ranch, coming to an event like this, there's a lot of stimulation and stress and they show a lot of expression and just got to teach them how to show expression in a good way. On Saturday, there will be a banquet where the famous Amber Lee Snyder will be speaking, and on Sunday, the Trainers Challenge Finals will finish off the event. Thomas Wildman, Primetime Local News. Now we go back to our Shelby Clark, who has an extended look at your weekend weather forecast.
Thanks so much again there, Miss Abby St. John. Yes, now taking another extended look at your weather forecast, we'll be starting off with our central zone of the provinces. We have cooled down slightly from what we were seeing with these temperatures yesterday. Uh, we are still, of course, seeing those plus temperatures, most just around 8 and 9 degrees, which is nice. But uh, yesterday we were seeing more spots with those double digits. Seems like Cold Lake seems to be the only spot uh, with that 10 degree mark, and the rest are looking slightly cooler. The coolest we are sitting at is Edson with that 5 degrees, and then we got 6 to Rocky Mountain House and Athabasca, so not looking too bad. I think we have seen worse and now uh, we will be warming up as we head into the weekend. Going over to our Saskatchewan side, they actually are looking slightly warmer uh, compared to Alberta side. Most spots just seeing seven degrees, so still seeing those single digits, but then we have a little bit more spots here with those double digits with Meadow Lake and Saskatoon just at 10 degrees. Going over to our northern zone now, they are uh, looking slightly warmer still from what they have been seeing uh, earlier on this week. They were kind of going down to those minuses. Now they have picked it back up and they are looking at those plus temperatures that seem to be continuing on for the past few days. Uh, the warmest on this side is Flim Flon with that nine degrees, getting even closer to those double digits. And then we have slightly cooler with up in Wollaston Lake, Stony Rapids at two degrees and just three there up in Uranium City. Meanwhile, everything else is just sitting around five degrees. Going back over to Alberta said here in our northern zone, they are continuing some nice warm conditions, kind of what they were uh, matching with yesterday. So they are still kind of continuing that track. Fort Juan continues to see slightly cooler just at five degrees, but at least they are seeing those plus uh, temperatures. Uh, down lower with these areas, Slave Lake and Grand Prairie, still seeing those uh, single digits with seven to nine degrees, but they are getting closer to that 10 degree mark. Meanwhile, Fort McMurray has just hit it. And then we have the warmest on this side with Peace River and high level at 11. But now as we go over to our southern zone, it seems to be that they haven't uh, warmed up uh, at all throughout this week. They have been kind of cooling down and matching with us more in our central zone. As I was saying, you know, they're kind of getting humbled lately because, of course, they were seeing closer to those 20 degree marks in some spots, especially with Lethbridge and Medicine Hat earlier on in the week. But now they have cooled it back down and seeing those single digits. Uh, eight degrees for Coronation and Lethbridge, while Medicine Hat seems to be seeing the warmest with that nine. And then we have three and six for Calgary and Banff as they are looking just a few degrees cooler. Switching back over to our Saskatchewan side, they are looking slightly warmer compared to what they were seeing yesterday. Uh, they were seeing around that two, three degree mark, but now they have warmed it up. The warmest we are seeing is Kindersley with nine degrees and the rest are just sitting around five to six. So definitely not seeing any double digits in our southern zone, but it's nice to see that we aren't really seeing any of those minus marks either. Now looking at some Overnight evening low temperatures expected in our surrounding area as we head into the weekend. Uh, we will be looking at those single digits for our minus marks, which is nice. We aren't really hitting those double digits quite yet again. Hopefully we will be seeing these conditions start to warm up from here as we uh, head more into our spring season. Uh, the coolest on this list here is Paradise Hill and Meadow Lake, expecting a low of minus six, a low of minus five. Isla Cross will be seeing tonight and Provost and Bonneville will be expecting a low of minus three to minus four degrees. So nice temperature. Temperatures and condition wise, it will be a calm night for oldly spots too. No high chances of flurries or rainfall. And looking at our hourly forecast for our Saturday here in the border city. So saying we're hitting those double digits for the weekend. Be prepared for that daytime high of 10 degrees, but we will be starting off slightly cooler with that minus three right off in the morning. And then as we go through the day, we will be seeing it warm up drastically. And as we continue on through our weekend, we also will be uh, expecting plenty of sun tomorrow. So make sure to get outside and enjoy it. We're almost at the uh, sun tanning season, which will be nice. Sunday, we'll be continuing that nice warm pattern with 13 degrees. So even warming up more as we end off the weekend. And we'll be starting off next week on a nice warm note with 14. We will be cooling down uh, later on past Monday, but don't worry. We will be picking that back up as we head into next Thursday and next Friday. And that's all I have for now. Our Abby St. John will have our news coming up after the break. I'm happy to be joined here today with Jen McConnell with the Vic Juba. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Abby. Of course. Now, the Vic Juba is partnering up with the Gold Horse Casino to put on a fundraiser for the Vic Juba, and it's called Fun Money Casino. Tell me a little bit about what that is and everything that's involved with it. Well, thanks for asking, Abby. Um, our board has just, like you said, put together this uh, really cool, unique idea that we have for a fundraiser that we're um, all proceeds will go to our lighting here in the theater. And so what happens is, is people come for an evening of fun gambling. So it's not real money with your $100 buy-in for the ticket, you get your stack of fun money, 
Uh, you'll get a drink and then as well as food throughout the evening. So the casino itself is actually a bit of a backstage casino here. So we'll have everything set up on our main um, Almershev stage as well as in our back rooms and the green room and dressing rooms and areas like that will each have its own kind of theme and gaming tables. So we've got your traditional blackjack, poker, roulette. Uh, there's actually going to be a money tunnel, which is going to be pretty fun. And so we have uh, lots of local businesses that have thankfully um, signed on to help sponsor each of those tables as well as a food and beverage and things like that. So we're really grateful for uh, corporate sponsorship that way. And we're hoping that the community will be able to come out and enjoy something a little bit different and see a bit of a different side of our theatre while helping us raise funds to keep it the arts and community hub that it is right now. That sounds like a very unique and fun way to raise money. Now, you mentioned that the money will be going towards lighting. Can you go a little bit more in depth on what the money will be going towards? Yes. So uh, we've celebrated 21 years of operations this year in the theater space. And so we're at the point in our facility where we just need to do some key replacement parts for equipment. So we're just kind of working through that list of items now that we're back and fully functional and business. And so specifically with these funds, um, it'll go to our operations as well as our lighting replacement projects. So we have some audience overhead, which you can actually see back here. Those will all be replaced in July of this year as well as we're looking to replace all of our stage lighting that um, is overhead of our Elmer Chef stage. And so um, with this specialty equipment, it can be pretty pricey, but we're trying to find something that's suitable for a community space where we are meeting all the artists needs of different riders that are touring through or local um, partners that we work with that want the different effects that come with a performing arts venue. So basically we're just at the point where because of our age, we're wanting to replace some things and get everything updated and, and up to the new technology specs that's out there. And so we really just want to make sure that we maintain our little hub for arts and culture performances with those necessities. This is such an amazing idea since the Vic Juba does so much with the arts and it's such an important thing to grow. Now, this is taking place on May 11th. Tell me a little bit more about the technical aspects. What time is this happening at and where people can buy tickets? Absolutely. So on our website, vicjubatheater.ca slash fun. That's where the details are listed on what basically will happen when you get here. So we'll have our doors open in ahead of time of seven o'clock start where people can come into the main audience chamber, grab a seat, grab a drink, um, and then wait for a little bit of an orientation and welcome from our partner, our title sponsor, Gold Horse Casino. And then we'll give an orientation for folks on what they can expect in terms of gaming tables. And like you said, if you don't know the rules of blackjack or, you know, what craps, you know, entails, then this is the perfect time for you to come out and try something because you're not losing real money. Uh, that hundred dollars will go towards supporting the theater. And so anyone that's gambling is, is doing so in a good cause for this evening. We're going to have some celebrity dealers like Mayor Gerald Albers will be one of them. Um, and so it'll be a chance to just really kind of socialize and, and hopefully have a little bit of entertainment. And so with that uh, hundred dollar buy-in, like I mentioned, you get your cash to play, you'll get a drink and then food as well. Um, and then you can also, if you happen to lose your money in the tables, uh, you can rebuy in as well. So um, at the end of the evening, there'll be a live auction where we'll auction off items that people can use the money that they've won um, to bid on, as well as we'll have a silent auction happening. That's for real money, uh, featuring some really cool, unique items such as VIP Vic Juba Community Theatre Experiences. Uh, we have an estate planning kit that's up for grabs from Fox Wakefield. Um, Vivid uh, Salon and um, Salon has donated, or sorry, the spa has donated a package for two. So lots of unique things that people can maybe get a chance to bid on um, as well as that's all happening. Awesome. It sounds like you guys really know how to put on a fantastic show, especially this fun money casino that is coming up on May 11th. So thank you so much for joining me and I wish you the best of luck with this fundraiser. Awesome. Thank you so much. The snow is starting to melt, spring is here, and before you know it, you'll be able to head out on the trails on horseback. But until then, right now is an opportunity for you to learn about everything equine at the Lloyd X. It's a show that's underway right now, and it includes a number of different clinics. There's going to be demonstrations, a trade show, a fashion show, and so much more, including special guests, 
Amber Lee Schneider. She's going to be at the show this weekend and she's a champion barrel racer who was in a collision and since then has been paralyzed from the waist down. So she's going to share her story. She's a motivational speaker now and she's going to be a part of this show. To get all the details, you can go online, LloydEx.com. Coming up on Sunday, it is Family Fun Fest. You and your family are invited for a great afternoon out. You can go for a wagon ride. You've got an opportunity to make some crafts together. There's going to be a photo booth, a chance to try axe throwing, a chance to win some door prizes. You can also enjoy soup and bannock and so much more. Family Fun Fest, it's on this Sunday at the Civic Center. It runs from 1 until 4. And coming up on Monday night, the Louisiana Hayride Show will take to the stage at the Vic Giba Community Theater. See amazing tributes to incredible artists including Conway Twitty, Loretta Lynn, Elvis and more. Full details and tickets are available online at victubatheater.ca. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. What's Happening is brought to you by Northern Factory Workwear, Circle Drive East, Saskatoon and Highway 17 South, Lloydminster. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. We are here in studio for this week's entertainment panel. And of course, thank you so much for joining us, Abby. But don't even need to say that because it's always going to be Abby. It can never be anyone else. Exactly. You and me. Yeah. Yep. Every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best part of the week. Of course. We yeah. have to say it because it's true. Yeah. Yeah. TGIF. I think everyone's really excited. And our first topic is a very fun. I think a lot of people are excited for this, but you know, there is also a little bit of controversy, I guess, just from some fans out there. But uh, I think we kind of all expected it because this is a woman-led movie and this is called The Marvels. Mm -hmm. Of course, we got some Marvel entertainment kind of stuff in yep. this panel. We can never miss it. Of course. But you know, the trailer looks really good, so let's take a look. Captain Rambo? What the hell are you doing? Entering the jump point perimeter. I'm gonna get you some readings, Fury. Monica. Hello? Monica. Hello? We finally got a first look at the Marvels. We got a teaser trailer, obviously at the end of Miss Marvel, which introduced Kamala Khan to the universe. Uh, Carol busts into her closet, and we're left being like, well, "What just happened?" Mm -hmm. um, but th we get why it happens, and it's because Carol Danvers, Kamala Khan, and then Monica Rambeau, who we were introduced to in WandaVision, their powers are entangled with one another. So if one of them uses their powers, they kind of switch places with another per one of the other two. Uh, and so that's going to be really interesting. Yeah. And uh, we have Nick Fury back as well, which is going to be very exciting. So this is going to be interesting. They have to kind of team up together. But th it also is going to be interesting seeing Carol and Monica kind of reconnect because in WandaVision, they kind of tease a little bad blood between the two yeah. when someone brings up Carol to Monica and she dismisses it completely. And obviously, we know from the first uh, Captain Marvel movie, uh, she Carol was best friends with Monica's mother, Maria. So we find that there's a little bit of bad blood between the two. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see that. And of course, Kamala Khan, we got introduced in Miss Marvel, and she's a super fan of Carol. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see as well. Um, it kind of alludes to they needing to team up and Monica and Carol be like, no, we're not a team. Yeah. But Kamal, you know, I think she's just super excited to be part of the Avengers and to be part of the team because of how big a fan she is. So it's going to be interesting, uh, and it comes out November 10th, so I'm very excited to see it. Um, and obviously there's a little bit of controversy around it. Yeah. 
from what I was saying before, we kind of shown the trailer there. Though, of course, you know, um, it looks like it's going to be definitely interesting. I'd love the uh, concept on it of them kind of mm -hmm. switching powers, and of course, yeah, them fighting to be like, we're not a team. Don't get excited, but yeah. of course, they're going to be a team. But um, I also think it's just so ridiculous knowing some of those misogynistic yeah. fans out there. And we always expect this when it is a yeah. woman-led kind of movie. Um, you got like I think it's probably probably the top disliked trailer mm -hmm. I want to say in the first 24 hours that it when it was posted yeah. like on YouTube and it's disappointing to see yeah. that I really hope that once this comes out we get more information mm -hmm. you know it's gonna get the recognition it deserves I really hope it is gonna be a good project I'm very excited about this movie and again if you don't like it don't watch it yeah I think honestly for those people out there that just hate it because it's woman-led which is very clear mm -hmm. and of course they have to go online to try and you know put dislikes and talk yeah. bad on it just, yeah, don't go see it and stop mm -hmm. crying about it. I think it's going to be a great project. Yeah. But we got another project that's going to be coming up here that a lot of people are not too happy about. Uh, yeah, so this one is Harry Potter, and it's a reboot, but it's with a whole new cast. And uh, J.K. Rowling is involved in it. There's just a lot of things that I think is very uh, interesting about this new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say that people are not happy about it, I am one of them. I do not think that a reboot is necessary. There are so many different routes to go and to take with Harry, the Harry world of Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. You could do a Tom Riddle uh, origin story. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the founders of Hogwarts, how the Marauder's Map was created with Harry's father and his friends. You know, there's so many different routes that they could take to bring, to expand the world of Harry Potter. You know, you have mm -hmm. the Fantastic Beasts, which was a huge success. The three movies that they had. You do not need a reboot, especially when the last Harry Potter movie only came out in 2011. Plus, we have a whole decade of this cast, of the original cast that is so beloved. Yep. They gr we grew up with them. So to reboot a series to span a decade with each season being each book, I think it's completely unnecessary. I think that they're not going to get, they aren't getting the reaction that they thought, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually read somewhere where this, the reaction that they have been receiving could honestly put this series in jeopardy because mm -hmm. nobody asked for it and nobody wants it. Yep. We have Daniel Radcliffe, we have Emma Watson, and we have Rupert Grint. Those are our Harry, Hermione, and Ron. Yep. That's it. That's the only way to look at it. And yep. that's the only way that the only way that this is going to be good is if they bring them back as the original characters but they can't do that if they want to start from book one on all the way to seven they can't yeah you're just ruining people's nostalgia with mm -hmm. the harry potter series and people are just not going to be here for it yeah and i think hopefully it will be uh, canceled and no harry potter fans can worry about that but yeah. we'll see yeah we'll, we'll see, see about that but that's all the time we have for this week's entertainment panel so once again thank you so much for joining us of course thank you and an off with a quick look at your seven-day forecast as we head into the weekend. Be prepared for beautiful temperatures. Make sure to get out there and enjoy it with those double digits. We also will be seeing some uh, sunnier conditions for the next few days as we head into next week. We will start off on a nice warm note, but then we will be cooling down after Tuesday with that rainfall. Hitting those single digits Wednesday, Thursday, but don't worry, we will be picking it up again next Friday. Thanks so much, Shelby. I'm very much looking forward to the sunny weekend ahead, but that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great weekend.